Call the meeting to order, Waitley Select Board, December 11th, 2017. First item approval minutes, meeting minutes, November 20th. Motion. Second. Any comments? All those favor? Aye. Aye. Comments from the public? Oh, you got very quiet public here tonight. Okay. Scheduled appointments. Done. All business. Done all project update and discussion. Uh, we'll get into that, Brian. Yep. One thing I'd just like to mention for, especially for the audience viewers, that the town hall that's under reconstruction, and there's contractors out there in and out of the parking lot, there's dumpsters. Uh, various locations in the parking lot and the side of the building. Uh, I just ask people that are coming to use the post office to be uh, patient, I guess, with, with the contractor there. It's only going to be there till well, the project's scheduled to end in June sometime. So uh, just be patient with him uh, occupying part of the parking lot. I know it's not like it used to be where you can just come and park anywhere. You've got to be be cautious of that. And what may make it difficult, I was there a week ago, Monday, last Monday, Waitley Inn had an event going on at noontime, so their parking lot was full, plus they may have spilled over into the town hall parking lot. So so it was a really hectic situation and people were used to just driving in and don't worry about other people there. So just say be cautious of the contractor to quit his equipment and the people walking around because he's walking around as well outside to the equipment to, to uh, work on a building. Most of that now is a demolition inside and some outside. Uh, that should end in a couple of weeks, we're hoping, so it won't be as, as busy in the parking lot as it, as it has been, so, okay. Paul, did you have something to say? Yeah, quick question. Um, is there any uh, border tape around the construction area to keep people away? Is there any liability issue? There, there is on the, uh, the uh, east side and there is on the south side. There's tape on the property line because uh, they're used moving around their equipment back there. But as far as in the front, not really. And there is, there is some by the mailboxes by the post office, it's part of it is uh, taped off mostly to identify the area where the septic tank is. So people or the contractor doesn't drive over there with his equipment. But other than that, no, not in the front or on the north side. And I've noticed people, other, some people living in the Smike's house are seems to be working with that they're parking on this on the lawn in front of the bill, front of the house which is acceptable i understand what they want to do so so i guess i appreciate what they're doing to try to accommodate the, the contractor and not be in anybody's way so but no they they move around in the front i have the equipment and say hopefully all the dumpsters will be gone in a couple of weeks so that won't be a a, a big a issue of nuisance as it is maybe today, but, okay. Okay, Brian? Um, well, I guess we'll, we'll talk quickly. Fred, you, you, you might know this better than I, but in terms of, in terms of uh, a status update on the project, they're doing, um, they're making headway in a lot of the interior improvements. Um, when I was in there, the, the Fred referred to, uh, mentioned that they're doing a lot of the demolition um, now, um, I know that they were doing some of the stabilization of the building. Um, we saw some of the, the, the guts of the building, and it's an 1844 building, and they did things differently back then, but it's held for hundreds of years. Um, so, I don't know if I did anything to add in terms of the interior work. Well, they've, they've uh, demoed the whole north side of the building, so if you go in, you can see it's all clear all the way to the back. It took out the restrooms walls that were in there uh, and they're trying to sister up some of the floor joists there and they're in the process of moving the safe that was in the assessor's office to the front of the building but 
they can't move it there until they fix up the floor where it's going to be at because it's not secure enough for the, the heavy safe that's there. So, so once they move that, then they can then they can start on the uh, the bathrooms in that area. The front, the, the vault has the whole has the pole cut in the back already, so they made that saw cut. So uh, that. And see, all the windows are, are out to the. Uh, window restorer, so that's hopefully be back, I, I don't know, soon, maybe, so. So the other part of, of the, the other component of the project is the, um, the exterior improvements to the building um, for handicap accessibility, and that's really the, um, the front ramp and the rear stair tower. As you remember, the town was required to seek a special permit for those, for those improvements to the exterior of the building, because the town hall was a a uh, non-conforming structure, and the, the public hearing was held last Thursday, I believe it was December 7th, and the, the Zoning Board of Appeals voted to grant the special permit. Um, so there's a 20-day appeal period for the permit, and after that, um, assuming over the appeals, then it will be recorded uh, with the registry of deeds. So we do have a request from the contractor about um, whether it will be okay to for the town to proceed with um, those improvements throughout the 20-day appeal period. Um, his reason being that if we wait a significant, um, significantly longer period of time, there's going to be additional costs that will be incurred in terms of insulating and heating the space to cure, properly cure the concrete. Um, so um, applicants are allowed to move forward at their risk um, if they so choose. I would be totally comfortable with that. <clears throat> I think the risk is pretty small. That's fine. Okay. And it's kind of cost us one way or the other, right? <laughs> so um, that's we should move forward. And that's the only way that it won't cost if we, if we can somehow catch that, catch a break on that. All right, okay, so we're all in agreement that they can go ahead and do that. Because yeah, that's once they start that, then they can start to structure in the back and work on that over Otherwise, they're sitting kind of right. waiting for that. So, right. yeah, okay. But well, one other thing mentioned: uh, the new the water, this new water service to the building uh, from the water district. Uh, they weren't sure where the water line was. Uh, we know where it came into the building on the post office side, but beyond that, nobody knew where it was. Uh, the contractor was excavating the side by the veterans monuments to put in electrical and he found a water line there, a newer water line than the original. So they, uh, the water district and department helped him uh, connect it to the water line the contractor put out through the building. So water service, new water service is into the building. Uh, it's not used yet, but it's, but it's in there. So that was some cost savings because otherwise it was dig up right across the parking lot. Yeah. Or dig up parking lot to find it, so we did find some, some savings there. Okay. Is that it? That's it for me. Okay. Yeah, we, we have meetings every two weeks with the contractor. Uh, I've been going, Brian, and Jones Witt said George Dole has been going, so just progress and changes and things that need to be looked at. So. Okay. Next item is the Whaley Town Center Veterans Monument CPA application. So it was recommended to me uh, by a member of the CPC that we submit a placeholder application if we want to have CPA funds available if this project goes above and beyond what we get from the state historical records access boards grant to a client for $15,000. The match of, um, the value of, of the town match would probably be another 15,000, so that would be 30,000 if the project were to go above and beyond that. C, um, CPA funds would be eligible to be used for this project. CPA applications are due December 12th, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So it was suggested that we submit a placeholder to at least get our foot in the door. If we don't need it, we can withdraw the application. 
if we need it, we have the possibility going forward to refine the application as this project comes together. Okay. And this is for the round that we get approved at the April annual town meeting? Yes. Okay. So it gives us the opportunity between now and when the CPC wants the final word on it yeah. um, to develop that project a little more fully and figure out what the costs are. Okay, so it's being submitted by the town because Veterans Administration is not a town office? The, the idea is that it would be submitted on behalf of the select board. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. So do we have to sign anything submitting this? So do you sign? Um, or are you doing that? If you do, if you, if, if you authorize me to sign it, then I can sign it if it needs to be signed. <coughs> I'd make a motion to authorize Brian to sign it. Okay, so, okay. okay. so you can sign it, Brian? Yeah. Okay, new business, uh, next AMP pilot agreement. I was hoping to have the final agreements here tonight, but uh, we don't have them. Oh, we don't have okay. the final contracts. The thing to sign. The thing to sign. Yeah. Um, just to back up um, a little while, a couple months back, um, the board authorized Joyce, myself, and Paul to uh, negotiate with NextAMP about uh, what the correct value of the pilot agreement should be for uh, the Long Point Solar Project and the Lately Renewable Solar Project that NextAMP has received permits for within the town. And we decided, well, with, with the board's permission, we decided to hire Beth Greenblatt from Beacon, Beacon Integrated Strategies. Um, and in my opinion, it, it was money well spent. Um, she negotiated on our behalf and she has um, three, I consider them complex models in terms of how they value um, the solar arrays based on, two of them are based on income, I believe, and one of them is based on um, their costs. And we have them together, and she comes out with a value. And the, these three models are, have been, uh, the three models have been approved by DOR, or I should say not disapproved by DOR. I believe that's how she says it. Um, but in terms of the result, if just for an example, yeah. if you look at the, so you look at the, she says long point solar project on top. If you go back to the, go to the third chart there, it says average. What, what we've agreed on with NextAMP is an average of the income method and the cost, me uh, cost method with adjustments. It, the real number to key in on here is the um, kilowatt per DC, the dollar per kilowatt DC, um, and that's the number that we've agreed upon. So for instance, this is Long Plain Solar. We've agreed on $9.85 per kilowatt DC. Their original offer was, their, their original offer was, was in and around $7. When you say agreed to, Agreed to internally or also in, with NextAMP? With NextAMP. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, the town hasn't agreed to anything because it would be up to the board to agree with that. But, but the subcommittee has, has agreed to. But Beth, yeah. that's what Beth is suggesting. And they've agreed. And yeah. they've agreed to those. And they've agreed to her yes. proposed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So now we're in the. We're going to get into the. Please provide your legal review. Then we'll do our legal review, and. And we'll sign the pilot agreement. So this hasn't been accepted by next so? No, it has. It, it has, has been, been, been accepted by next yep. Yeah. yeah. Can, the oh, documents okay. will need legal review, though. Okay. But the the heart of it, the, the terms of the agreement, the terms are settlement. It's actually even better than what's written here because uh, I think well before we hired Beth, they they were willing to go up to seven dollars uh, per kilowatt DC, and we were asking for more like ten, and there we are. Very close to 10 to start with, with a 2.5% escalator there. I think the other one starts a tiny bit closer, $9.93. Uh, and the next, next AMP original offer, at least right before we hired Beth, seven. was 7 They might have gone, like, kicked up to seven fifty. dollars hopefully we wouldn't hire Beth. <laughs> but, uh, right. So, uh, forgive me, and me, I, I'm assuming it's probably a simple answer. Why are we looking at the third chart as opposed to the first two? 
third is an average. I guess. The average. It's because there's more than one acceptable way to. And right, but why are we taking the average and not the? I'm assuming these are options. Oh. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think the average is because any of those particular methods might not be a good way. Some of them give lower numbers, some of them give higher numbers. Um, and any of the three methods, you, you might, in an abstract way, say they're all valid ways. So how do you reconcile things when that happens? You say, well, let's take the average. Because if you take the one that doesn't take costs into account, they're going to say, but our costs, our costs have to be taken into account. But if you average the one that has to do with cost and the one to do with um, valuation, um, then you actually get something that they're like, okay, we took your costs into account. And, um, so it's more of an explanation as opposed to a, a, something to accept or not accept. Right. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay. Now, is there, is there a valuation and, and cost? Or, or income. Are they, are they the same? Well, what? They're, uh, they're not. Valuation is that? Not for uh, the, the one I'm looking at here, the Waitley Renewables. There's the income method. So if we look at how much yeah. income they'll make off the, as opposed to something that relates more to what their costs are, you get different numbers. Cost right? to construct. And the cost uh, definitely goes down with time. But that's cost to construct the um, solar farm? There may be some other costs involved there as well. Um, it's, a, it's a really complex model. What, yeah. what I like about it is when, when we try to negotiate with, with Nexamp, there's lots of this, oh, this is so complicated, you'll never understand it, all this other kind of thing. Um, but Beth can get in there toe to toe and she understands every complicated bit that they counter with. And she can say, well, yeah, maybe your cost is this, but then she knows exactly what else you ought to be considering. Which, if we did, you know, if we had her job or if we worked in the, that industry, then yeah, we'd be able to negotiate that. But she can actually go toe to toe with every argument they give. And this is, uh, and, and basically, she got us something like um, my records here when, when it was back at like seven dollars per kilowatt hour was that they might make a payment of eighteen hundred in the first year, optimistically. Uh, and here, the first year is twenty six. Uh, so the, that's income that we will receive the average year by year, yeah. yep. and then and then going to the to the Wheatley Renewable Solar Project. That's just an additional twelve and a half first year. Yep. Yep. These are and, and next year I'm signed up on both of these. Uh, yep. Remind us again. Joyce O'Brien, and I should know this, where on Long Plain and where is the, um, where the renewable solar project going to be housed? Well, like I said, Long what Plain is, is, is at the bottom of, of end of Long, well, end of Christian Lane, kind of behind the right, blue school. Behind the Grip Coast. Okay. And the other one is across from Cocotts, or that Cocotts property. Uh, where's that? I don't uh, two lots behind, two lots west of, of my property, where Irene Farrick is, and okay. next to her, between gotcha. her and... Uh, so they're pretty the close property. to each other. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Half a mile apart. Yeah. Speaking, yeah. yeah. The other method I've heard about before, and I don't know if anybody's using it, is the depreciation method. Did well, you they're talk about that at all? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and that the, the stuff depreciates in five years to according to state law. Right. So five you, like the, the, the basically yeah. you get nothing after five years. No, but you got more money up front that way. Right. But you get more money overall mm -hmm. this way. That's, that's what day. you're trying to, you're, you're in, the thing that you're doing is you're doing them the favor of letting them pay a more even amount over a longer period of time uh, so that they don't have to borrow money to come up with the upfront costs. And personally, I think that's in the best interest of the town to do it over a period of 20 years because then it's not a feeding frenzy for yep. sudden cash. Yeah. Because so those are painful. So it's 25 9 for one and 12 6 for the other. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> First year. First, First year. year. Okay. I'm just curious, what, what is our rates we have now for the farms? Are they close to this? No, no, they're yeah. much less, they're less than this. The, the first ones that we had, we were the first in the state to right. do them. And there was no Beth Greenblatt around. There was a Jewish Palm Fortune. There was me. Uh, and, there were, uh, and a few, and the, the folks around the table, you were on that committee. 
Yeah. We were looking at um, the comparable things in New England. We had to look all right. over New England to get wind right. and and hydro and other things like that. So so there, it's just a whole new world of information. There is so much more information available. Um, and uh, learning from other people's strategies as well. So this is significantly more per ki per kilowatt hour, uh, per, or per kilowatt capacity, I should say. And the increase is two and a half percent every year? Yep. Is that uh, uh, definite or is that yes. negotiable? Um, we, I mean, we could have asked them to not, to not escalate it and have it be a flat number that exactly. stays the same. Right. But we started at two, we got them up to two and a half. And I just I put my foot down. Both feet. Both feet. Because <laughs> we're not going to get three. Or no. Yeah, no. And, and then the way we got two and a half was that that's pretty much what our taxes, I mean, people who live here know your taxes go up by about two and a half percent in a year. And that's based on the idea that our town's levy limit goes up by two and a half percent a year. And we're smack up against the levy limit pretty much every year because right. we're a small town so uh, that's one thing we can count on is that uh, everybody's taxes are going up on average two and a half percent now it might because it's a chain it's tied to assessments it might not be this year or the next year um, it, because the assessments go in, in rounds of three but um, all of our taxes are going up two and a half percent and we can't think of a reason why we do it for our local businesses theirs are going up at the same rate so why on earth do they deserve to So are we supposed to take a vote on this or? We have to sign something eventually, but those right. So this is just information ready. at this point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, moving on chapter ninety reimbursements. So Keith wasn't sure if he was gonna be here, but this is a uh, chapter ninety reimbursement for paving in West Whaley on Connolly Road. It's just for that was completed. This I believe takes everybody, it's everybody. right? Everybody gets to sign. Well, I'll let Prince have no time. Okay. And moving on, Sunderland's 300th anniversary. Mm -hmm. Transfer and space. Transfer station. station collection. Oh, transfer station. Okay. This one would just be signed by Fred. You recall we, we hire, um, hire Franklin County Solid Waste District Inspector Transfer Station. That was completed and there are no issues. Mm -hmm. So this would require. Signature of the responsible official. Oh, there's only one responsible one at this time. Or the, in Fred's case, the official. <laughs> the official. Okay. We can't take ourselves too seriously. No. Oh, it's just this one. We have a letter from the town of Sunderland wondering whether the town of Wade would like to participate in its 300th anniversary parade. What's the date on that? Yeah. Same. June 16th, 2018. Do you have a time? No. I'm guessing morning. Late morning. Now, this is just for anybody in town, or is this select board? Or? At this point, it would be the town, yeah. There would be the town of Whaley participating in the parade. I guess the only answer we need tonight is whether the town of Whaley wants to participate in the parade. Yeah, and we can figure out the yeah. paperwork. Well, that's a busy weekend. But. Say yes. Yeah. Okay. We will complete this form and send it in. <coughs> um, we might not send the full slate, but I think we ought we, we to be able to send a representative. Did 
Charlie, did we agree to participate in the brochure advertising? Or was that Conway where we agreed? I think, it was, I think that was Conway. That was Conway. I don't remember seeing anything about a brochure for Sunderland. Okay. So you'll respond to that? Or is anybody looking for Yeah, if they need your signature, I'll, okay. I'll let you know. Okay. Burkog, uh, Human Resources Professional Program. You provided us a couple pages of description. Yeah, so this was sent by Bob Dean of the Furcog. Yeah. Trying to explore whether there's a need for um, a shared human resources staff person that would be shared between Furcog and, uh, and the municipalities of Bangor County. And I mean, I think the bottom line, I've had some discussions with Lynn about this because Lynn and Mary Ellen handle most of the, the HR um, items that we have. And we just find it hard to justify the assessment. We don't just- What is the assessment? The, um, the draft assessment would be over, would be around 10,000, between 10,000 and 11,000 dollars. Year. Yeah. Per year, seeking a two year commitment. And we, we really, at the end of the day, we don't have a lot of employees compared to, compared to other towns, and we're just not certain that we would get a good return on our investment. Um, right and here, now. they're not talking about um, help hiring new people when you need it. This is just uh, doing things like making sure people's tax forms are filled out, like the W 4s. Well, there's a list of about 18 different yeah. items here. Cool. A couple of pages in. Oh. The bullets tells you what they would do. Yeah, I mean, they could assist with, with staff recruitment, but we don't hire all that often. Right, there's that list, but I mean, turn it down. Yeah. A couple of pages, there's more. Uh, How, the town of Waitley would benefit the most of, of, of a situation where there would be a kind of an on call. Expert, we could we could call with questions that that had this information readily available. But for for ten thousand dollars, I you could hire someone to do that on a one off, right? And <clears throat> we can KP Law has people who are versed in, in personnel law, and we could take fifteen minutes of their time. And I just think the commitment's a little bit too large for what we would actually use. I'm with you. Okay, yeah, I kind of agree with saying. Sounds reasonable. No, okay. okay. What we'll, we'll you're saying sounds reasonable. Yeah, and if it if this program gets going and we think eventually it's something that we could benefit from, I think we could revisit it. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't like the idea of committing twenty thousand dollars over two years for something that I'm not sure we actually would use. Especially with our upcoming budgets. I just not Deerfield and Sunderland said they were interested. <coughs> Page. Well, that's fine. Uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee. There's a vacancy. You had an announcement on the, our web page. Have you had any responses? Um, I've had. I've had. Well, really, one response in relation in relation to the web page. The Capital Improvement. Planning Committee bylaw sets forth certain members that need to be represented. And one of them is listed as the superintendent and his or her designee. And for many, many years, I imagine it's been um, Don blanking on his name. Don Skrasky. Don Skrasky, sorry, Don. Um, and um, I asked the superintendent um, how she wanted to proceed with filling that vacancy. And she, recommended that Katie Edwards be appointed as her designee, um, that the select board appoint Katie Edwards to be her designee. Has the person mentioned been approached about this? Yes. Really? Yes. You didn't know. You, should, you probably would <laughs> recuse yourself from the vote. Yeah, I probably would. I'm going to vote no. No. <laughs> yes. So uh, oh, one meeting. I have emails I can uh, show you. Really? 
Yeah. There's a paper trail? There's a paper trail. An electron trail. All right. So you, so you personally... It's not going to be a fun night. Okay. Let me check. No. Okay. Okay, so that's the only one. So there's still one vacancy? There would still be one vacancy, yes. And, and is there a, a slot for that vacancy or no? Um, the one person that I've had preliminary conversations with... No, I meant it oh. does have to fulfill a certain mandated pilot, um, silo, like like Katie yeah. with the school. This is an at-large vacancy. This is an at-large, okay. Yep. Sorry. I don't want that. At-large vacancy. <clears throat> uh, the one person I've had preliminary conversations with is Donna Wiley. I'd want, huh. I'd want to confirm that with her before, yeah. before we go. She'd be good. Point around, but yeah, she'd be good. She's, she said Can, I, can I just ask you? Now, was this the fill um, for the reconstruction of the high school? Um, nope, that's um, next. That's okay, that's because right, I, yeah. I couldn't quite hear you. This is the Waitley Capital Planning Committee. Gotcha. Don Skrowski was on forever, that's right. so I understand. Yeah. And then he retired off the school committee. Now, more, I think it's appropriate to have a school committee member on the committee. Okay, so we're still open looking for one, one vacancy. If anybody is interested, please see Brian. If you wouldn't mind making a motion for... Um, for Katie. Yeah. Oh, for Katie. I move that we appoint uh, Katie Edwards to the uh, Capital Improvement Committee for the Town of Waitley. Second. Uh, as the superintendents. I abstain. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. One okay. abstention. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Or no. I, didn't, I wasn't or sure. No, you can say you don't want that. As much as I would like to vote no, I don't think it's appropriate for me to. You're lucky it's not live broadcast. <laughs> oh, don't worry, they wouldn't watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. Uh, Frontier Regional Repair Subcommittee. Voting representative. Uh, got a letter from Lynn Carey asking for select board to appoint a member to their, their co committee here. Uh, I would actually volunteer for that. Okay. I think it's important stuff. Well, I, I guess I was thinking of volunteering as well. Uh, uh, yes. Can I just make a comment? Um, I believe the Finance Committee had some discussion on this, and we felt pretty strongly that whomever took that position have some, have some kind of commercial construction background. And um, in order to you know, make sure Waitley is rep represented the right way. So I, I just want to throw that out. I don't need, I just thought it had to be one of the things. <clears throat> but if, if that's your understanding, it does not. I, I don't think it does, I but I, I mean. My, the closest thing I've had to commercial construction experience is I've watched them be built once in a while from afar. Okay. That's two of us. I call it commercial, but public construction experience plus home construction experience plus remodeling. Involved heavily with remodeling the town hall, so yeah. Uh, and I have engineering background, so well. Uh, and, and I think that this, to me, this committee is looking for kind of a, what I'm going to say, a engineering uh, decisions, uh, design, construction decisions, rather than a uh, political or, or a financial committee right now, I think that that may come about later on, but I think... I think you're right, Fred, and I think uh, if said individual uh, does not have that background, it'd be very easy to get lost in the political yeah. storm that's going to happen up there with our neighbors, so, so to speak, as we right, see have to the put the sandbox together. Right. Exactly. That sandbox gets full very quickly and elbows being thrown so the um, other the other reason i think that it's important to have one of the three of us is that my guess is that our neighbors will have one of the three of them i agree and if we don't have one of the three of us we're we're, we're at a at deficiency right there and i'm not being critical i just that's just the reality no, no, it's, 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 well, uh, it's true but one of those individuals also has an extremely strong background yeah right in yeah. the building trades right so well that's if that person is on the is on his committee you don't know but i can imagine 
Yeah. And, and I guess the other the other thing, Brian and I have been going to the some of the meetings on the Blue School, so I guess we're familiar with. I think there is a subcommittee for that. We're not members, but we've been asked to. Why well, we're not? I'm not sure. Participate. I know because it's their school. I guess we're we're participating because we of the adjoining land. We don't have to. I mean, we I don't know have we own, but they didn't. Right, right, right. But and, and I don't know. If, the other people on that committee, well, there's none from Whiteley, but I mean, there's, there's Conway and... Yeah. and Which makes all the sense in the world not to have a person from Whiteley on the... Come on. Is Bob, is it Bob Hall on the committee? Well, okay, Bob Hall. Okay, Bob? so I guess there is, yeah. Okay. I, I guess you could Bob say Hall. there is... Okay, there is that's from Whiteley, yeah. Most yeah. Whiteley. Yeah. Sund I don't know if Sunderland... I say I have one on there or not, but... Uh, it's still my opinion that even with this committee in, in place, there needs to be some professional assistance with yeah, identifying yeah. building deficiencies and right. prioritization. I hope. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I did not think it has to be someone from the select board, but um, it, I think I can see the advantage of that. And also, we don't need to, I mean, they're public open meetings. You know, you probably know every contractor who might be willing to go to a meeting and, and actually help evaluate something. So you know, that doesn't mean that you have to do every single piece of work. If there's something that needs to be looked into, then that can be something that goes to, you know, people who do that for a living. I mean, I feel like as you described your experience, it's very uh, broad and it's kind of uh, looking at the big picture, which I think is a really important thing, and there may be some places where you need expertise looking at smaller chunks, and that's easy to come by, I think, from uh, people you know. Right. So I'd, I'd be comfortable with Fred being I'm fine with that. I, to that. I just also want to make sure that, that the subcommittee is talking about alternative revenue streams, because it shouldn't just be the school yeah. budget, the town budgets. <clears throat> it may sometimes, and it sometimes will be, but I think there they, may may have be, gotten, they may have gotten that message at the last meeting. Yeah. Well, I think driving by. the point home repeatedly is probably a good idea. Because yeah. we all sometimes go back to the path that we wore so well in the past. That's just human nature. Yep. Well, I, I don't think you're proceeding with their bond proposal right now. Yeah. We, we haven't heard it unless Brian has from I don't believe Nor should say. Yeah. So. I think oh, yeah. not. So, and they're all valid things, but yeah. let's be right. reasonable about how to pay for this. And there's a way to go about it. That's not it. Again, I've said before, we are in the era of school competition. And if we don't have facilities that com can compete with other schools, we will be at a loss. So in the era of school competition, we need to have the finest facilities, but let's do it smart. And there has to be some... Um, understanding on their part that it's it's up to them to maintain this. Absolutely. And I'm not convinced that's happening. Well, and, and I guess I would hope that whoever we have on the subcommittee doesn't just represent the Necessarily represent the select board. I think the decision needs to come back Absolutely. to the three of us if there's a decision to be made oh, yeah. on, on whatever. So it's not like it, that person is a spokesperson for the board. Yep. So do we have an appointment? I move we uh, appoint Fred to the Frontier Regional Repair Subcommittee. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Yeah. All right, okay. Voting delegate. Uh, annual voting delegate. I nominate Brian. Who was it last year? Fred, I think Fred's coming too. I don't want to be the new guy. That <laughs> I, I would, I would, Fred. Fred. I've been going to the town hall. Okay. I'm going to strongly encourage that Brian be nominated. Okay, yeah. <laughs> there are no responsibilities there. You get a much like town meeting, okay. although it's less important. You, have a card and you, you get a card and you wave it, and there is no discussion. It's very much like the Politburo, actually. Um, you just wave it and you say okay, and then you go back to your chicken. So I, I saw the four. Is there, what's there? Four resolutions that were in the latest newsletter. 
That's basically what they're voting on, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and there will have be no seen, discussion. Have you ever seen one get voted down? No. no. <laughs> I've never seen anyone offered. I mean, it's mine, then. <laughs> she makes me want to go. <laughs> no, I, so I, I can't go. Right? The school year has started and I can't go. Because then, also, if you want to exit stage left during the lunch, yeah. you can, but you, you can't. can't. You can't, okay. We'll leave him here. Okay. <laughs> I make a motion to Brian represent us at the uh -huh. annual MIIA. But I'm certainly going to go to lunch to watch Brian enjoy his. Yeah. Okay. We have a second. He makes sure I hold my card high enough. Okay. Right. Everybody agree on that? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Annual license renewals. Perfect. Perfect timing. Uh, license renewals. We get some yeah. stuff to sign, I think. Yes. You have a spreadsheet. There's a spreadsheet here that Janet put yes. together oh. of yes. his licenses, Good. and they're all flat, correct? And there are one yep. million things to sign. Yep. And right? these are all renewals. Painful. Uh, can I ask okay. the these licenses stay with the the, the building, with the owner, or with the building? Case it goes. <laughs> I believe the licenses are to the owner. Yeah, you can't the owner. transfer. They had that problem at Circle K, didn't they, where they yeah, technically yeah. transferred Somebody ownership and needed yeah. to reapply. Maybe right, here. new management, a new management, yeah. but, right, but they have to reapply if management changes. Right. So one right. of these is for sale. The, the well, that, they'll cross that bridge when they come to it. So if it is sold, then they have to come back and apply it for In theory. theory. Okay. We have like 10 minutes. Okay. So it right. goes with the person, not with the building. I, I, I the believe so, yeah. I believe I'll double, yeah, check. I'll double check. A building can't hold a license. Yeah. An individual is the only one who can hold a license. These are for the... Now, whether it's transferable automatically from owner to owner. Class one, one class two. But that person can licenses. Say, go down the road and have another building and have the same license. I don't believe so. I think they have to. I think it's the owner, but... Part of it is where the, you got where the facility is located. I think you can start signing. But I could be wrong, right now. So, like, if you want to go to Gates and Package Store, with that. Maybe we can. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just wondering. Yeah, maybe we can. Okay, so Brian, you will look. I'll, I'll double check on that. So I think the motion will be to, to renew the licenses as set forth in the, unless you want to vote on each one individually. No, you just vote as set forth in the spreadsheet. And these are all flat, right? Okay. No change. Okay. These are all renewals, yep. Oh, you have updates? Probably not. I have, I have one item. You're not time to okay. No. Okay. Okay. These are <coughs> inholder and common victuallers. Other business I don't know. What's your time in those updates? I've got to find out what to do them, so. And you again. Why is the door getting replaced? Uh, Brian, why is this door getting replaced? Oh, they can't fit the uh, <coughs> power jack through sure. the front door. The who? No. Power jack. They probably can't fit the power jack. Oh, are they paying for it? Or are we yes, paying? they're paying for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thirteen. Thirteen minutes to get all these things signed. Mm. It's gonna be like though. interesting <laughs> music <laughs> on <laughs> over it, right? You must have strong writing muscles. You correct papers a lot. I've been reading all day. Well, that's the question. It is that time. Why? Why is the restriction on liquor sales for uh, muffins? Did you get time? It would have been what was originally imposed. Yeah. Yeah. Blue laws don't exist anymore, really. So. Well, you can't sell before noon on a Sunday. That's old. That's gone. That doesn't exist anymore. No. Well, all the grocery stores I go to have little signs up. Really? There. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, we, I mean, in a prep bar and restaurant. Automatic amusement device devices. Uh, you know those? There's a jukebox. <laughs> or pinball machines. Right. Those devil machines, by the way. The devil machines? Right. Gambling. And Ryan should pee. It says parking only on the premises of the way we end. When did that get into? It? That's never been the way it works. I know, and I would and I would argue that it shouldn't. That they should be able to use other parking opportunities. We've never restricted that. You've never. Not since it's never. It's never been, not been enforced before. Since, since I've been here. Nor should it be. I guess my point is maybe we should Take amend out. this at some point in the distant future because we want that business to thrive, and if we restrict the parking. That limits yeah. the thrivingness of it. Right. Yeah. I suppose you just don't want to promise them that you can always do that, right? Well, there's stuff going on, buddy. Right. Again, I would never want anyone to force it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one both of them needs to be signed, I think. This is the first time that those restrictions have been so you know, attached. Yeah, I think it's always, I guess, been sent out. Yeah. I just put them together. So yeah, which is great because I, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. 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 Officially, they'll put out the names, and then a future meeting when they are becoming an official committee, yep. yeah. that they would. Uh, that's when it would really be approved. But I can email, okay. or I can just <laughs> say hi. Okay. I mean, I think that's it. No other business. So our next, our next meeting is not until next year, right? January? I believe you're right. January 10th. Yeah. And we're on the what, second and last Mondays of the month. Wednesdays. 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 Oh, okay, Wednesdays, okay. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. In favor, aye. Yes. Okay. Did, you need, did you need to be seconded so it was nominated that you are? The, oh, that won't actually get uh, uh, officially approved for when they the, they'll do the whole slate of the, like five or six people they're going to put up for that committee. And all, so yeah. we just weren't allowed to deliberate outside of public meeting house would be a quorum. So okay. we needed to deliberate here. Right. Correct me to abide by those ridiculous laws. Yeah. Any chance right. I get to dig at the open meeting one today? So have we officially adjourned? Are we adjourned? Well, I'm moving to the yes, I suppose okay. I would have to let someone else be.